Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series uh, where we have a short interview with a PhD who is doing PhD in Aerospace Engineering in TU Delft, Netherlands. He is from India. So let's start with the interview with uh, Gaurav Mahapatra. I have with me Gaurav Mahapatra. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's move to the topic of your PhD. Maybe you can give a brief overview of what is your PhD about in aerospace. Yeah, so my PhD is uh, uh, to understand the atmospheric processes of uh, terrestrial planets and specifically uh, on Venus. Uh, but um, I mean, atmospheric science is also a, a, a extremely broad science. Uh, in atmospheric science, my part is to uh, um, use programming or uh, what we call as numerical modeling to model the uh, uh, transfer of light uh, through the atmosphere. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, the best way to relate it would be uh, there's a lot of satellites observing uh, Earth through images and uh, uh, spectrometers, uh, and you have different wavelengths in play. So the question is, what do you expect from uh, these instruments, and how do you model the light? because uh, someone who's sending up an instrument to space, they want to know how exactly their uh, the signal that they're receiving should look like so that they can plan better, they can uh, know what they're looking for. Uh, so the whole domain comes under uh, uh, the radiative transfer of light. So that is my PhD. And uh, uh, specifically, my work is to understand how light is uh, reflected through clouds and uh, atmospheric particulates. So this also means uh, we uh, uh, we try to understand how uh, pollutants uh, affect light and how we can study uh, or measure the pollution that is happening uh, uh, because of this effect that pollutants have on light. Um, yeah, that's my PhD uh, in a more broader sense. I don't know if you want to go uh, me to go into very details of uh, the science. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, as a beginner, if I try to understand like uh, the immediate application of what you are doing, yeah. so is it like more helpful for uh, uh, launching satellites or receive or seeing how the signal from the satellite comes and uh, how fast can it come? Is it something like that, or if I understand or may I'm understanding it wrong, like? So uh, the second one, it is the signal that is coming from a satellite and you okay. want to know what is there in that signal. And uh, a big part of that is actually modeling the signal. Uh, so the light comes in to the atmosphere. It interacts with the, the whole atmospheric uh, uh, constituents on Earth, for example, and it bounces back to the satellite, right? And uh, the idea is to know for example, if I have uh, a certain amount of cloud cover, how would the light look like? Uh, okay. how, how would the light change if there is no cloud? And what is the whole mathematics behind that? So that is the transfer of radiation. And also the atmospheric gases affect the, the, the uh, outgoing light also. So how, uh, how would we detect carbon dioxide? How would we de detect increase in carbon dioxide? Uh, those are the questions broadly that uh, we can aim to answer. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so going back to your PhD work, like is your work only with the university or do you also work with industry and university? So how is your PhD uh, work or contract or whatever you can call it? So my work is primarily with research organizations because it is a research uh, uh, topic. Um, although there is a lot of industry involvement, I have not personally worked with uh, the industry uh, in Netherlands, uh, but I have worked with major research organizations around the world. Like uh, I have worked with NASA, I've worked with uh, uh, JAXA, and uh, we regularly interact with the uh, ESA, uh, European Space Agency uh, uh, researchers. Um, we actually have a big collaboration with the uh, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. Uh, 
So for me, these have been the primary uh, points with of collaboration. Uh, so yeah, research organizations would be uh, what I interact with mostly <laughs> during my PhD. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So did you get any additional responsibilities during your PhD? Uh, like uh, just for anyone who does a PhD, maybe in two Delft. So to have an idea, like, do you get any additional responsibilities like teaching or grading or some kind of spatial work apart from your research? Yeah, so uh, we are, as PhD students, we are also supposed to be uh, satisfying uh, uh, some teaching duties. So I participated in uh, multiple teaching duties, bachelors. Uh, I, I took part in three bachelor uh, level uh, graduation projects. Uh, so uh, for three years consecutively and also I was the teaching assistant for uh, a, co a few courses in master's level also. So these are the teaching duties more or less and they normally do not take a big chunk of your uh, uh, work to be very frank. So you should be okay. I, I think it would be somewhere around. Uh, so in a way we how we measure it is uh, it should take one day of your week. So if you have a five working uh, day uh, per week, uh, effectively in an average over four years, you should not have more than one day of week uh, as a task load for teaching duties. And I frankly enjoyed uh, uh, teaching and uh, taking uh, uh, courses, uh, Frank. So yeah, it was quite nice. Okay. And yeah. I think if you like, in case if someone wants to go in future in academia, then it will also help you a lot. Like, yeah, indeed, uh, yeah, as you as you point out. So anyone who wants to pursue a career in academia, uh, like a assistant professor or a, 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 yeah researcher, they require some amount of experience with uh, teaching. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. do you need to have any specific number of publications because this criteria varies from university to university and faculty to faculty as I have heard. So do you need any specific number of publications before uh, you are able to write a PhD thesis? Uh, then we can move to the other questions after you answer this. Yeah, uh, in my case, uh, I have at least three, possibly more uh, uh, publications. As of now, I have already two publications in process. Publication is an extremely painful and time-taking uh, process, which probably you also know being a PhD. Yeah, uh, so yeah. uh, in my case, if I have at least three, I am allowed to write a dissertation. Yeah, but it, as you said, it varies very much with uh, a PhD. So you, I would advise someone who wants to do a PhD to contact uh, the uh, the concerned supervisor or person who's offering the PhD and ask them already what is their requirements. Uh, so mm -hmm. be very frank and not uh, not put this to very end. Yeah, yeah. I also know, for example, PhDs who do not require any publications to graduate if they. Uh, have enough work through other means, uh, for example, experimental work and uh, produce a meaningful thesis, then they can graduate uh, without a paper also. But yeah, in general, it is becoming less and less because more uh, uh, at Udall, at least the focus is a little bit more on trying to match the the whole uh, uh, research publication uh, expectation because a publication is quite a big achievement. Uh, uh, you get to re get reviewed by a lot of uh, other researchers and uh, so it is seen as a standard, let's say. So in general, you can expect to have few papers or to write uh, a few papers before you graduate. Yeah, I, I, I can also totally relate to that because yeah. we also have something like that, at least for us, like three to four uh, publications with a combination of some conferences and some journals with certain impact factors and something like that. Exactly. So, yeah. So as I have heard, like when you have certain number of publications, most places what they do is like you compile those publications and maybe also extend some of them and make a story out of it like a like a book where you write your thesis. So yeah. is it the same in your case also, like when you write a PhD thesis or like what's yeah. your take on it like? Yeah, so for for me, actually, uh, at least uh, I do have to uh, compile all my papers. Uh, 
so it does not have to be all published actually uh, some have to be uh, because even during the publication there are a few uh, steps uh, under review or first review and uh, uh, maybe you are going to submit your rebuttal uh, so if you have already undergone internal review and uh, for in, in my case i am allowed to uh, compile the papers and uh, even if they are in sub, uh, the stage of submission i'm allowed to uh, defend my thesis and it's a compilation of uh, uh, papers plus an introductory chapter and a conclusion chapter or i mean sometimes you can also have another chapter describing a bit more in detail what you did because sometimes uh, um, a paper is uh, a paper dives directly into the topic uh, but for uh, someone who's reading a phd thesis you need a lot of introduction into the topic so yeah it depends on your supervisor and yourself i guess uh, in my case it's introduction papers and conclusion yeah okay uh, yeah so let's go to the next question uh, about your supervision so how is the phd supervision that is again very subjective but what was your experience of the supervision the supervision team did you find it helpful and after uh, how long do you feel that you can or can't manage without them so i mean like uh, at what point did you feel like okay uh, uh, this is already enough and i am now feeling very independent as a researcher with minimal guidance that i can manage these things so uh, okay. so what was your experience yeah so this also is very subjective uh, uh, depends on how your how the style of your supervision supervision team is uh, how it happened for my case is that uh, i started off and during the first year i used to have regular meetings probably uh, once or twice a week uh, which i think in my opinion is already quite a lot uh so yeah it, so it involved understanding my uh, uh the 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 initial surrounding of the work so uh what is it exactly that i am working on uh, a big part of it is defining the research because uh, the first year is all about finding the exact uh, uh definition because it's uh, you get into the topic and then it takes some time to actually understand the topic and um make your research statement more uh, uh, clear uh, in my case it was uh, uh, almost twice or uh, uh, once or twice a week with my supervision team and uh, i have one daily supervisor and uh, there was also a postdoc who was helping uh, whenever i needed um so initially how i got into it is i also worked on their projects so that was a good way to actually start getting to know the whole process and whole whole system so uh, then there was a lot of engagement but uh, after that i think uh, i would not see my supervisor for 15 days at a time and i would just be working on my things uh, email is also okay uh, uh, it really depends on how your uh, your supervisor and you agree with i know people who have uh, uh, like really tight scheduled uh, a planned supervision meetings and uh, they they attend um, meetings every week or uh, even every month um yeah it really depends on uh, what it is with uh, how you decide to do it with your supervisor but uh, apart from that we have at least a uh, uh, planned meetings in the sense that we had uh, three months meeting six months meeting uh a go no go meeting i don't know if you have already addressed that uh, where they yeah. decide yeah. i addressed in a short video like what yeah. happens after the one year they yeah. have a go no go meeting yeah so that's where they decide uh, whether you are capable of producing a research uh so uh, yeah these are the de defined meetings and then you have yearly meetings so second year third year fourth year uh Uh, and in these meetings generally all of your supervision team come to, comes together and uh, uh, yeah it is basically they they judge you by the work that you've done yeah <laughs> yeah i i hope that this is like already a rich set of experience that you are sharing and maybe very useful for everyone who is watching this or maybe who want to do phd in aerospace later uh, yeah. so 
moving on to the final set of few questions because i know people will be saying like the video is getting long so i'll leave timestamps in the description below you can always click them and go to different chapters of the video yeah. so yeah so what did you like and dislike the most about doing a phd in netherlands at least in aerospace in tudelft and uh, maybe you can add to that like what were some of the major challenges or the lessons that you learned till now yeah this is a very broad question <laughs> yeah so i i guess the biggest uh, challenge i had is uh, having the mentality to pursue your own research because uh since you are addressing to uh, the indian students uh, at least for me it was that we are very dependent on our supervisor and we are tightly controlled during our bachelor's uh, 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 work and uh, i don't know subsequent masters probably um but the the whole um let's say ethos uh, at udelf is to be an independent researcher that involves defining your own research Uh, coming up with interesting uh, questions and uh, uh, addressing them systematically it cannot be chaotic uh, so i guess that was the biggest challenge for me to uh, get to that mindset where uh, i am not looking for others to give me the answer but uh, framing my questions and uh, trying to find the answers through methodical uh, steps that was the biggest challenge and i still am uh, working on it i'm not uh, uh, an expert yet but yeah i guess that's the biggest challenge and i don't know what was the other question yeah so that was like about the like and dislike about doing the phd here yeah so yeah i think the like and dislike both can be from this perspective that the the like is that while uh, in a normal job you uh, have to report to your boss and uh, do what is uh, meant to be done in the project in a phd you get a lot of independence to do whatever you want actually quite a, a scary amount of independence so i have seen people abusing it also in the sense that they don't uh, uh, use it to the best uh, possible uh, manner uh, so the good thing is that you are free to do whatever you want uh, but the uh, that also becomes a disadvantage because if you have to uh, uh, produce high quality research then it all has to be your responsibility so the freedom also has its disadvantage so yeah <laughs> yeah that that that's a very good point that you yeah. mentioned like uh, so yeah so after phd like what are the post phd opportunities like maybe going for a post doc or going for some r and d in some companies going for some consultancy staying in academia like what are the options that one can explore at least in netherlands yeah so you basically said it all <laughs> these are the uh, these are the possible <laughs> uh steps that is either a post doc if you want to go into uh, more deep research and uh, uh, uh pursue the research that you like a post doc is a possibility maybe i can say from the point of view of post doc that uh, for a post doc also you require to uh, write your own uh, research grants most of the time uh, which is quite a challenging work and um, uh yeah so a post doc is always an option um, but there are other po possibilities like research positions uh, which are not post docs but you basically work in a research project with a research group so then you are like uh, uh, in a research organization as a researcher but uh, uh, you are not being judged as a postdoc uh, so when i say a postdoc it means that you still have to uh, produce some original and independent research and uh, probably have some publication so but yeah in netherlands in general you have a lot of opportunities uh, especially if you are a, a graduate from tu delft aerospace uh, i think everyone who graduates from tu delft aerospace is uh, highly is considered to be highly qualified in the market so uh, i know phd's who have gone to do uh, uh, consulting at top firms um, although in netherlands uh, it is a requirement that you need to speak dutch uh, if you want to do consulting so that is one uh, i don't know a negative uh, because uh, 
in all of our phd we did not require to do any uh, speaking in dutch but if you want to do certain jobs in netherlands after your phd you need to learn dutch um, but having said that most technical jobs do not have a, a language requirement and uh, as of now uh, we are living in a corona world <laughs> uh the it looks like uh, netherlands still has quite a lot of opportunities although uh, i might be biased on the basis of my skill set um but i have not seen someone uh, suffering um, from not having a job for a long time so you can expect to take some time to uh, find a job but eventually you should find something because there's quite a lot of possibilities yeah okay so yeah so i saw from linkedin that you were or you are till now part of a phd committee so yeah. like what is your experience of it and uh, to add to it you can tell something about the social life that a phd can expect yeah so uh, i became a part of the phd uh, uh, it's called phd co uh, council so uh, there's basically phd's uh, some phd from every department who go on to uh, basically represent the well being of all the phd's so it's like a phd uh, uh, well being committee uh, it's been nice so the the most important thing is that we organize events to make sure that the phd's in the department interact and uh, share their knowledge and uh, because also one big aspect of a phd is that most of the time a single phd is isolated in their own work so you need to give everyone a bit of encouragement to go out of their bubble and uh, interact with others so i guess that's the main thing that we have achieved by organizing multiple events every year uh so personally it has been a learning opportunity for me uh, because then i also got to know a lot of phd's and how they work and uh, how they deal with uh, the stress that comes with a phd because that's actually a very important topic uh, um yeah it, it's been good and apart from the the committee uh, the social life is uh, i would say uh you do get a lot of opportunities to go out and pursue a social life so it is really up to you some people uh, take up the opportunity some people don't but at least we have a few uh, um, planned uh, uh, events where you can interact with master students in a casual setup and you can interact interact with other phd's from the department and you can also uh, uh, probably just go out and uh, meet <laughs> uh people because in delft there's a lot of events happening and uh, yeah you just have to step out of your house yeah okay so to end the interview any final advice or tips you have already given lot of advice but yeah. any final to sum up like any final advice to future aspirants who want to apply for phd in aerospace maybe yeah. for after masters in netherlands or maybe from abroad anything you want to like yeah so uh yeah the biggest uh, um advice i the the most important advice that i would give is if uh, you should be very sure that you want to do a phd because the phd is uh, uh, is a big commitment and it requires a lot of perseverance and uh, let's say uh, mental strength to be able to continue doing this research for 4 years and uh, eventually produce some important results so the biggest uh, advice i would give is really make sure that uh, you are uh, 100% committed to doing a research because uh, if you cannot uh, commit to doing the research uh, it is really it becomes a suffering because uh, it uh, the tag that a phd uh, at aerospace uh, is of course probably considered as uh, something uh of a high uh, desire but it comes with a lot of uh, hard work and commitment and eventually it uh, uh, it go the it turns into a big struggle if you don't uh, have your correct motivation in place so i would say that just make sure that you're really uh, uh you really want to do the research so for me the passion comes from uh, knowing that i'm doing uh, research that i like so you have to be committed to doing the research and producing good results in the research and not necessarily getting a phd
So if you do good research, you will get a PhD eventually, I think. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Gaurav, for giving your valuable time on a weekend for Thanks. this discussion. And I hope that it helps everyone. And don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video and share this video, help each other out. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe to the channel. So till next video, in the next video, I forgot we are going to discuss about how hard is a PhD, which is a very broad general view of the PhD. And till next video, goodbye from Netherlands. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>